What is up, our squad? Welcome back to week two of our identity series. Today I've got with me my friend Donald. What's up? Introduce yourself. Tell us who you are, where you're from, what you're about. Okay. Yeah. My name is Donald Stockton. I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, just moved down here. I'm in the Marine Corps. Just trying to figure my way out down here in North Carolina. Good. Yeah. And Donald, funny, we actually first met unofficially, or I saw him a couple of years ago at a lacrosse camp because he played lacrosse in college and I was at a camp and he was giving his testimony and he didn't even know I was there until about five minutes ago. So that was pretty sick. Um, so yeah, me and Donald both played lacrosse, probably had some similar stuff. So it's going to be really sick to talk about identity with him and kind of get like that older brother treatment. A little Absolutely. bit of, little bit of wisdom, a little knowledge. Um, so yeah, today we're going to be talking about is what I do who I am? So um, yeah, let's just, let's just hop into the first question, get into it. So how did your identity change after you started following Christ? And what was your identity in before? Okay. Um, my identity changed a lot once I started following Christ. Because before I was following Christ, my entire life was rooted in how well I would perform in different spaces, the people who knew me, and what they knew me for. And I grasped so hard onto like that physical identity that nothing else mattered to me. Like I knew, I knew who Jesus was and I read the Bible, mm -hmm. but I never lived out my faith day to day. Yeah. Yeah, mine's mine's pretty similar too. Like, just specific with lacrosse. Like, I viewed myself more as a lacrosse player that went to church on Sundays sometimes with my family than a Christian that plays lacrosse and is that's just something that you do. It's not who you are. You know what I mean? Um. So yeah, I got another question for you. What were some of the challenges? in the process of switching your identity from those uh, physical things that you talked about to God? Uh, there, was, there, were, there were a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. There were so many challenges. Uh, and, and I'm still working through some of them today. Um, but one of the things that I had to learn was I am not naturally godly. I'm not holy at all. I can't work. I have to work to be godly. I can't just show up and be naturally godly like I am when I'm like playing lacrosse. You know, mm -hmm. I was pretty athletic growing up. So when I stepped on the field, it was just like, it just clicked to me. But when yeah. I tried to become a follower of Jesus, it was so hard. Like yeah. I had to turn a lot of myself, my, my flesh off to tap into what God was trying to speak. to me. Yeah. And I think that's a, I think that a lot of Christians deal with is like in their day-to-day -day lives, like you're usually doing stuff that you're comfortable with, that you're good at, like you've been doing it for a long time. So then once they get saved or once they are starting to put their identity in Christ, they actually have to work for it and do something that they're uncomfortable with for a while until it gets comfortable, just like anything else. But they think like, oh, I'm saved or oh, my identity's in Christ. Like this is just should be easy now. Like why is this difficult? But you got you to gotta put them the hour, the hours in. And I see that you put a, a verse in here. Uh, yeah, Matthew 6, 24, it says, No one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other, and you will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. And that was a big scripture when I was going through college mm -hmm. because um, I went through this phase of fighting God because it felt like I had to give up so many mm -hmm. things. And I realized that I love the world more than I loved God. Yeah. And I was serve. I was trying to serve God, but also serve the world that I lived in, like my friends and lacrosse and all the people who liked me. And I wanted to be liked and I wanted to be popular. And I ended up hating God because I felt like I had to give up all of the things and all of the people who liked me. Yeah. That's a struggle. It is. Yeah. I'm I've I've been there pretty recently. Really? 
yeah, still working through it. I think we all are in mm. some way, shape, or form, but I'm sure a lot of students can identify with that. Um, yeah, one thing that was really tough for me in sports was um, viewing as a, an opportunity rather than like a job, like something that I was, I was gifted in naturally. And it's, it's a blessing that I'm even able to do this and be in this culture. So yeah, just that mindset switch was kind of hard for me. Um, it just kind of felt like a chore, like something I had to do rather than something I was able to. Um, yeah, and my emotions and my self-worth and my like how I felt about myself a lot of times became tied to my performance on the field and that's not a great place to be in so my next question is just have you ever felt like your value was based on your production and any of those physical areas of your life and uh, how did if so how did you work through that well absolutely um just thinking back to all of the long days and long practices uh, in college. And we, and our coach used to have this depth chart. He would produce every week and it would change your spot. And mm -hmm. it was usually, it, my week usually depended on how high on the depth chart I was at the end of the week. Yeah. And a lot of the times I was like in the second and I was like, oh no, I got to get back to the first. I got to get back to the top. And it made me feel sort of like, worthless as well but also like you like you said earlier we we met through fca and i did fca in college in a lot of my emotional um stability came from how well i performed in like even faith-based spaces you know mm -hmm. how how good of a huddle leader i was mm -hmm. um how well the the players or the boys reacted to me leading them through a huddle so it even my pride in my my self-image even infected like those faith-based spaces as well. And it really made it hard for me to detach from myself and like let God, you know, take over my life. Yeah. And like one of the things that I, I, I did, I had to do that I actually just recently learned on being in renovation um, is creating a relational um, relationship with God rather than a transactional relationship yeah. with God. It's Tell him. <laughs> it's not about like what you give God. Mm -hmm. It's about spending time with him. So one thing that I did to help get me out and help to continue to get me out of that like production based mindset is like going alone, shutting the door, opening the word and spending time with him mm -hmm. and actually becoming like closer to him as a, as like a two beings trying to be, be yeah, closer together. A relationship for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one thing that was tough for me or that I used to do a lot it was like kind of based off like my value and when I was performing well or when I was not performing well in, in sports was when I was doing good like my faith was stronger and I felt good about God I was pleased with God and then when I was not I was distant and I was asking him for something rather than thanking him for things. So it really did feel transactional rather than relational. So I'm really glad you brought that up. Great point. Um, I've got another verse here. It says, or it's, Hebrew, it's Hebrews 13, 8. It says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So do not be attracted by strange new ideas. Your strength comes from God's grace, not from rules about food which don't help those who follow them. So yeah, God is consistent, dude. He's the same yesterday, and he'll be the same tomorrow. So how did the inconsistency of the things, the physical things that you're talking about, affect you and your identity? Okay. Um, so to like lean, lean heavily in that college, that college mm -hmm. life, because a lot of the our squad students are about to step into college or stepping into high school. Okay. <laughs> they're gonna like go into a new space. They're gonna like kind of create this identity for themselves. Like this identity that I created for myself was this kind of 
cool, popular kid, like guy who played lacrosse. Mm-hmm. Also, he was a he was a Christian, and that was like the identity that I created for myself in college. And in my mind, I had to keep it up. I yeah. had to be the cool, you know, kind of popular kid who also played lacrosse and by also you know, was a was a Christian. So I, I went out. I, I did things that weren't healthy. Um, I I did. I had relationships that weren't uh, correct. And I wanted to feel liked and loved and popular. But, you know, when that clock hit zero, when the game was over, when, mm-hmm. when I graduated college or when the night was over and I went back to my room, I truly, honestly felt lonely. Yeah. I felt. And I hated what I was doing and I hated myself because I trusted and leaned so heavily in the things that were so inconsistent and had an end. Yeah. We were letting those things that you do. Exactly. Become who you were, yeah. And and it was and it made it worse because like I was praying and I was like watching sermons mm-hmm. and I was and I was reading the Bible and I was like, God, why am I why 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 are you leaving me alone? Why am I so alone? Like I'm I'm praying to you, I'm trying to do everything right, but it was like your actions are not matching your words. You're serving two masters. Absolutely. Um, and then I kind of like put a verse in here, Matthew 7, 26 through 27. Uh, but anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish. Like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rain, when the rains and floods come and the wind beats against the house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. And needless to say, when the rains and the winds came, my house crashed so hard. Yeah, and I was not prepared because the second I got off the stage and college was over, everything that I had knew prior to. Mm-hmm. And that's something we talked about last episode a little bit with Willie, just like that moment of total hopelessness mm-hmm. where everything's just gone, and then it's just I don't even like if I was because we've all had those moments in our lives, or if you haven't, you will. If I didn't have God, or the, for the people that don't have God in their lives, like I don't even know what I would do. I'd be the same. Yeah, guaranteed. I and I've I've always loved that um, analogy of a firm foundation, a house not built on sand. Absolutely. It's just so cool to visualize that and how it just holds you there and strong. Um. Next question for you. How you feeling? Feeling good. Are you? Feeling light. I feel like you're doing good. Thank you. I'm trying. <laughs> um, so if what I do is not who I am, then what is the point in doing it? Why am I still doing these things if they don't define me, if I'm a child of God? Okay. Um, if you are, if you do like what, oh wait, if what you do is not who you are, and I'd say that is a good thing um, mm-hmm. because if what you are is what you do, then quite honestly, I believe we are all failures. Yeah. We all fall short. Mm-hmm. We let someone down at least once a day, maybe yeah. even multiple people down at least once a day. Um, and failure is inevitable and you will fail probably more than you succeed. Yeah, because we're not called to be what we do exactly we're called to be children of god and do things to reflect that and to bear his image right exactly that's good um got another question a lot of questions oh you're doing great i'm coming what is your advice to students losing passion for things after disconnecting their identity from them this is one that like i've been dealing with recently okay um so one thing that i've been reminding myself of uh very often is to identify with my condition Mm -hmm. Um, tell me about that and my condition is a desperate child in need of a father right and when i think of like a desperate child in need of a father i think of like a little kid like i work in reno city you know, helping with the buddies. And I'm, I'm in the fours. And when you see, like, a four-year-old kid after his parents walk away, after their parents walk away, 
crying. They're bawling. They're sad. Yeah. They're emotional. All they could, all they want is to come back into relationship with that parent. And if we can identify not with the, 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 the things that we do like lacrosse mm-hmm. or our jobs or our careers, but we can identify with our relationship with our father. All we want is that intimacy mm-hmm. with him. Um, and got a little story because it didn't really click for me until I was reading in Matthew six after Jesus fed the 5,000 mm-hmm. and he was talking about himself being the living bread. And people were like, nah, you're crazy, bro. We're going to leave. And then he turns to the disciples and he, and he says, are you going to leave me? And Simon Peter, he says verbatim, Lord, to whom would we go? You have the words that give eternal life. And when I read that, I thought of that Reno City analogy when they're talking about separation from that heavenly father. Yeah. So like when you feel disconnected from the identities that you kind of associated yourself with, mm-hmm. it's because you found like some sort of like intimacy or gratification mm-hmm. in that relationship or in that identity, but there's satisfaction in the relationship with God, a greater satisfaction. Yeah. So almost... It's like you disconnect from those physical things and those relationships and connect with God, and then it allows you to appreciate and understand your relationships with others better. Absolutely. And you kind of like scratch it, connect, and then rebuild it all with a better, that firm foundation we talked about. Better foundation. Better mm-hmm. house. Um, so yeah, don't lose the passion for what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Just redirect it towards God, and then it'll, like, just come from you mm-hmm. and everything. Dude, I'm almost out of questions. You're almost out of We're wrapping up. All right. Do you have anything else, any wisdom, encouragement for, for students? Yes. What you got? Took me 23 years to figure this out, but you need to find a secret place with God that you can go and talk to him about any and everything on your heart. Because that is the most important thing between you and God. Tell me about, what's, what's a secret place? Okay. So, for me, a secret place is a place that only me and God go. Mm-hmm. And I go and commune with him. And I tell him the things in my heart. But I also go to receive the things that he provides for me by reading the Bible. So, so is this like a physical place? Or is this like a mental state you're in? Or both? Or how does that work? It could be both. So. Um, for me, I go into a different room, Mm -hmm. not where I sleep, not where I eat. It's a completely separate room. I close the door and I just open my Bible and I read and I sit in silence. I just let him talk and I talk back and we just commune together. Yeah. That's huge. Okay. Yeah. Find a, find a quiet place. Find a secret place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. David. (laughs) All right. Bottom line. You leave with one thing. This is what I want you to know. What you do is an opportunity. It's not who you are. And redirect your passion for the things of this world towards God. That's all I got. You're so good at this. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. Killed it. Thank you. All right. That's all we got, our squad. We'll see you next week. We might be answering some of your questions that you guys have about identity. Who knows? We'll see. Might have a another important man on the podcast. Yeah. We got all dudes this this series. All right. Peace out our squad. See yeah. you.